and heard some statements from my former pastor that were incendiary and that I completely reject, although I you know, knew him and know him as somebody in my church who talked to me about Jesus and family and friendships, but clearly had, you know, but, but if, if all I knew was those statements that I saw on television, I would be shocked. Well, that was Senator Barack Obama on the campaign trail talking about the controversy over his former pastor. In fact, it's really been a war of words this week for presidential candidates. Barack Obama making rounds Friday night to answer questions about his relationship with his former pastor, Reverend Jeremiah Wright, while John McCain, Republican side, distanced himself from comments made by another minister. So what does this all mean for the campaigns? Joining us now, Democratic strategist Susan Estridge and Republican strategist Jason Rowe. Thanks for being here. Uh, I want you to both to listen to uh, something Juan Williams said. He was analyzing the Reverend Jeremiah Wright uh, situation. He was talking this morning on Fox News Sunday. He chose to be associated with Reverend Wright and saw advantage in it, and that's why he exploited it up to a point when he realized, especially when he was uh, announcing, that he couldn't have Wright by his side for the announcement in Springfield. Uh, and now seeks to somehow distance himself, but it speaks to his character, and it speaks to the judgment, which is the basis on which Barack Obama has been running his campaign. So I well, think wait, it could wait, be I a big problem. Could be a big problem, according to Juan Williams. And one more thing I want to take, uh, take you to, and this is a, a media veil. Before this whole controversy erupted, Barack Obama talking about the campaign and race. First, was I black enough? Then am I too black? I don't know what exactly the margin of black vote is that is the optimal, not too black, but black enough. Um, but that's not the approach that we've taken in this campaign. So Susan, starting with you about this controversy over some of these things that Reverend Wright has said, how much does this hurt Barack, o Barack Obama's campaign? And could it be that it took a long time for him to address some of this? They had to know that it was out there. Uh, because he wanted to really tie himself to that African-American community on the south side of Chicago. Well, that's the part I find so curious, Brett. I mean, listening to this guy, you have to ask yourself, is it really possible they had no idea some of these incendiary things he said? And I think the reason it took so long is because this is actually a legitimate, close relationship he had with this guy. This is not just a, a minister whose church he attended once in a while. This is the guy who married him, who baptized his daughters. And while I think most people aren't going to vote for or against Barack Obama based on the sermons his minister gets, gives, I think it's certainly the kind of thing that hurts a relatively unknown candidate. And this is why this process, unattractive though it is, may be a good thing in the long run. Because if Obama is to be the nominee, he needs this kind of vetting and he needs to go through this miserable process. And Jason, uh, you don't expect the Clinton campaign to touch with this with a 10-foot pole, do you? Well, you know, Sun Tzu, the, uh, the ancient Chinese warrior, uh, had a number of uh, uh, advice is that he gives strategists and one is when your opponent is destroying themselves there's no reason to intervene you know the problem here is while we know uh, probably more about Hillary Clinton than we would like to know we know her and with Senator Obama we know little or nothing about him prior to him being elected to the United States Senate and immediately declaring himself a candidate for president of the United States so in order to kind of assess who Barack Obama is we have to look at the associations that he's maintained over his career and you know unfortunately for him this is one of those associations and I think a larger problem he's gonna have is this is a church that he was a member of for 20 years and right now we have uh, seen a couple clips of some statements that have been made in recent years but right now I have to imagine that their opposition researchers both for Senator McCain and Senator Clinton's campaigns are going through everything that uh, 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 Mr. Wright has said over the last 20 years and I have a feeling there's going to be a lot more that Barack Obama will have to respond to in the coming weeks about comments that he's made and probably in Senator B Obama's presence. And Susan, quickly, uh, you know, Democratic strategists, uh, I don't know if you've said this, but others have said John McCain has stepped away from some of the pastors who have endorsed him, some of the things that they've said, uh, the McCain campaign saying it's, it's apples and oranges. 
Is it? Well, I think it's apples and apples, actually. And I think, you know, guilt by association is completely wrong and completely common in politics. And this is just the beginning. The digging and the information available make mudslinging a lot easier than it used to be. Okay, Susan, Jason, stick around. We've got another segment coming up. Thanks. After the most intense primary season on record, the candidates will have an unprecedented six-week break between campaign contests. The next one, the Pennsylvania primary, April 22nd. The candidates won't be resting, of course. In fact, some analysts say the next stretch could be crucial. Joining us once again, Democratic strategist Susan Estridge and Republican strategist Jason Rowe. So, Susan, about the next five weeks, I guess, uh, before Pennsylvania, What's going to be happening? What, is this going to be uh, the Iowa caucuses on steroids? I mean, what, what is it going yes. to be? <laughs> yeah. I think, Brad, that's exactly right. It's the, the Iowa caucuses on steroids. And when you look at the amount of money they have to raise and spend, they have to keep up this momentum. I mean, I get tired, frankly, thinking about it. But I think what we saw last week with Reverend Wright and the back and forth, just a taste of what's to come. And it just isn't going to stop. And then they talk about Michigan and Florida maybe doing a redo June 3rd. I mean, I get tired thinking of that, too. <laughs> well, let's get some coffee in you. Let's keep it going. Uh, Jason, the, the question I have is momentum. Is this all about momentum for Hillary Clinton? She, she can convince or can she convince superdelegates to come her way? Well, well Brett, uh, you know, it will end up being about momentum because... Uh, you know, right now she's got a double-digit lead there. She's bounced back in the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, but we are talking about five to six weeks until this thing happens. That is a lifetime, and I don't think anyone would have anticipated that we'd be sitting where we are today. Uh, this is a diverse state that will be a battleground state. If she loses it, it's a big problem. But again, these are not proportional distributions of delegates, and so uh, you know, there's there's not going to be a, a trophy at the end of the Pennsylvania uh, victory for either candidate. Uh, you're still going to have a very narrow uh, race going into their convention. So. Uh, uh, we Republicans are enjoying this uh, very much. Susan, you mentioned Reverend Wright. I mean, do you think that this thing is going to keep on going? I mean, it's going to have legs of its own? If the Clinton campaign doesn't get in the fray here, how, how does the story continue? I mean, Obama said what he said. Well, because here's what happens. The Clinton campaign won't touch this with a 10-foot pole, but they don't have to. You know, two, was it just two weeks ago that Saturday Night Live did the skit about, you know, Obama getting comfortable in the media, giving him too easy a time? There's still more stuff. I mean, I don't know. This guy didn't give just two bad sermons. Nobody, uh, including Elliot Spitzer, does the wrong thing only twice. So there'll be a few more sermons that'll have to come out. Then there'll be somebody who will show a picture that says, oh, wait, Obama was in church that day when he said X. Why didn't you stand up and say something? And it'll dribble, dribble out for at least a few more days. And in this Internet era, you know, there's no limits to the information you can dig out. So this one won't go away, and then they'll turn on Hillary, and then it'll be back to Obama's fundraising, and it'll just, you know, we all got to fill space for six weeks. This is how we'll fill it. <laughs> Jason, what about John McCain? I mean, you say that they're popping champagne corks because this thing is going back and forth, and the Democrats are beating themselves up, but yeah. there's also getting a lot of coverage about uh, Democrats, and, and it's going to be a long time before John McCain can get the spotlight. You know, I'm, I'm not necessarily convinced that's a bad thing. Uh, you know, right now, the Republican brand is so beat up over the last few years. Um, you know, there has not been a ton of good news even in recent weeks for Republicans. And so for Republicans maybe to, to be a little bit underground while Democrats are, are uh, giving each other black eyes might not be such a bad thing. And give Senator McCain kind of a way to reintroduce the Republican brand and, uh, you know, a few weeks down the road when people are more focused on uh, the ugly side of uh, the two Democratic uh, presidential campaigns. Jason, Susan, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.